All right, good afternoon, everyone. How has our first week been here? Yeah? Fairly pleasant. All good? Yeah? Pretty easy? Good. Anyone got any questions for, for me about the program? Or? Yeah, I've got one question about the, the lockers. What's the deal with them? Take one. Just, Just take one? Take one. Take one so or no, no, I've got your own pad locker. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, and probably pays to put a little piece of tape with your name on it as yeah. well. So, uh, yeah, grab one of those. Oh, that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? That's the biggest question we got so far, then we're doing a pretty good job. All right, so um, today, this afternoon, is uh, drawing for product design. Um, now, we've got a, I think we've got a mix of mid-year entry people from last year and, uh, uh, and new people starting this year. Uh, but we kind of think that drawing is, is really one of the fundamental skills that, that uh, a good product designer has and we're not talking drawing as if you're uh, going to be painting something like the, the Mona Lisa or spending two weeks on, a, on an illustration or a drawing that's not the kind of stuff we do in product design or industrial design and I'll show you some examples a little bit later today of where we're heading in this course and um, who's done some drawing before who thinks they're a pretty good drawer already one person Go on, you for being brave put your hand up. Uh, two people. All right. Now, the good news is anyone can learn to draw. Okay? If you're able to write your name, then I can teach you to draw this semester. Um, and I, by the end of the year, I'll show you again later today where, where you're heading with this, um, this drawing stuff in this program. But don't be intimidated. Everyone can learn to draw. All right? Um, today's lecture is a, is a little bit... Um, it's a bit like housekeeping. We've got a bunch of contractual stuff to go through and just setting the scene for what happens over the course of the semester. I'll talk at you for about 40 minutes or so, um, and then you're going to start drawing today. Um, I'm going to give you your pen, and I'm going to give you some paper, and we're going to set you loose and see how you go. Um, so that's going to be exciting. You're going to have a sore arm probably by, by 5 p.m. today. How the lecture format normally works though is it's, it's a bit like a cooking show. Um, I sit here and draw stuff and tell bad jokes. Uh, you guys might in interrupt and ask me questions, but I'll demonstrate the stuff that you'll then go away and do in the session afterwards. Okay? But let's get through the, the tedious stuff. Uh, of course, Learn Online. Hopefully you're all very familiar with how Learn Online is working by now after the other, other courses you've been taking this week. Um, but I'm going to start with the course outline, which we're obliged to do. I'm going to pick out some of the, the highlights there. Now, um, I think the introduction is kind of a good summary of, of where we're heading. I'm not going to read it to you word for word, but as I mentioned just now, um, one thing that you'll notice about good product designers, good industrial designers, is that they can draw. Okay, we're, we're not, and like I said, we're not talking about drawing like a fine arts master. We're talking about drawing for communication. Um, in, in my experience, uh, professional experience, some of the uh, best best moments when we're trying to get a product to market or in a meeting trying to communicate something is the ability to rapidly produce an illustration that communicates something you're trying to talk about because. Words are great, language is fantastic, but even if we're all speaking the same, the same language, then it's open to interpretation sometimes what it is exactly that, that we're meaning. There's been a heap of uh, moments in, in my career where I might have been on the production line um, in a factory in China where nobody's speaking English, I don't speak any Chinese, but we're able to push things forward because pretty quickly I can pull out a notepad and, and draw what it is I'm trying to communicate. Um, you're often drawing as a means of idea generation. Um, I think there's often the misconception that great designers, artists, kind of sit and stare out the window or, uh, you know, look at the wall or sit in the pub and just come up with stuff. That's not how it works at all. Um, there's a bunch of things that, that go on to kind of, I guess, stimulate that, that creativity and those ideas and drawing is one of those things. The sooner you can get stuff out of your head and onto a piece of paper, 
um, or make a small model of it or something like this, then you've cleared that space in your head to get more ideas and build on those ideas that you've had. So um, drawing is, is one of those, those skills. Most of you have already started physical prototyping as well. We're in the workshop kind of making things. You know, these are, these are those real hands-on things that we, we do as, as designers and um, they help set up um, that mindset to, to be creative and get those, those ideas happening. Um, so I am your coordinator and lecturer in, in this course and later today you'll get to meet Abby Vidyafi, who is um, going to be your main tutor in the practical session that follows this lecture. I'll be in that practical session from time to time, um, depending on what's going on that day, but Abby will be the main person in the practical and I'll be the person delivering uh, the lectures. If you've got any issues with due dates, talking about anything to do with the course, uh, contact me. And as you all know by now, the Slack workspace is the place for that, that communication to happen. We'll get back to you in a much more timely fashion if you get us there compared to email. Has anyone not got Slack happening, didn't get the invite, struggling with the app? Excellent, we're all good with that, fantastic. Um, make sure you're in that drawing channel that's, that's in that Slack workspace. Um, I'll be posting links in there as well, little reminders, maybe there'll be stuff you need to bring to class each week. Yeah, one question. I'm unaware of what that is, can you explain it? Great, maybe I can show you that after Beautiful. we, uh, we finish the lecture today. All right. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's the place where I'll be doing most of the communication with you. All right. Um, so, let's get to some of the more interesting stuff. I've given you a list of, I think, interesting references there. If you do want to learn more about drawing, there isn't a textbook that you need to buy. Um, the notes that I give you each week are going to be similar to what you've got today. So I give you a bunch of good examples. I think they're good examples anyway of, of stuff that, that uh, I've drawn. Um, I'll link you also to my YouTube channel where there's a lot of time-lapse stuff of um, the, the, the work that you'll be doing and, and some other stuff as well, which might help you with your uh, design drawing, but these are some other books and other websites that, that um, I think you would probably get some value from, so um, checking them out would be a good thing, and I think the, the link at the bottom here, the one that says self-explanatory, is probably where I'd start, um, but I'll let you look at that in your own time. Drawing equipment and materials, I'm going to give you what you need to get started and what will take you through probably the next four weeks today. Um, and what it is, it's, well, let's, let's have a look at it. It's a big biro, okay? That's, that's all you need to get started with this course. And I'm gonna give you some A3 paper today. Um, as the semester goes on, uh, there'll be some other things that you'll need to get, like a thicker black pen. Um, and I'll give you a link today for that if you wanna get out early and, and buy one of those. Um, I'd suggest that you go and buy yourself a ream of A3 photocopy paper. Um, you're probably going to use most of that ream in this course. Yes, you are going to be doing that much drawing. Um, just get the inexpensive stuff. I think it's five or six bucks from somewhere like Officeworks. Um, and I'll give you some specs on the thickness of paper that I recommend as well. We don't want to get stuff that's too thick. You, are, you guys all know what I mean by photocopy paper? And have you heard of cartridge paper before? Yeah. Now I can see. I think your notebook there might be cartridge paper. Do you want to hold that up? Is that kind of thick paper? No, it's not. It's lined. Has anyone got like a, one of those bound sketchbooks with them today? Yeah, like that. That's it. So it's got quite a thick paper. We don't use that in here. If you've got one of those, don't start your drawing with that. Um, for a few different reasons. Um, they're expensive. They're heavy. You've got a come up with a nice portfolio at the end of the course. So if you use one of those, you've got to cut it out and cut the um, bits where the, the binding was. Um, they suck the pens dry real quick. Um, but some of the, the methods that we use in here to rapidly draw is we often use tracing. Okay, so you might draw something and you want to improve on it so you can trace over the top of it. You can't trace without um, a window or a, a light table with that cartridge paper. 
Right, so there's a bunch of reasons we don't use it. Uh, the photocopy paper is much better. Okay, um, there are two assessments in this course. Um, assessment one is what's called continuous assessment, and assessment two is a portfolio. Um, now, I think you get these reminders in your My UniSA app anyway, but for the first seven weeks of this course, there is something due at the end of each practical session. So today, you're going to be doing your first submission. All right. Um, and I'm, don't panic, I hear everyone just stop breathing for a second. Um, I'll go through what, what's involved in that shortly. But the key thing is to get, get those dates in mind, so even if you're not here, um, you might need to apply for an extension if you're ill, uh, you get the flu or some other reason, uh, you do need to apply for an extension before the, the deadline. The work that you do in the first seven weeks in class <coughs> is worth 40% of the, the overall grade for this course and the portfolio that comes at the end is worth 60%. It's really hard to fail this course um, if you just come to these practical sessions, trial the work and spend about three to four hours with, uh, in homework time each week. Um, I will say one thing now, if you, if you don't do the practice each week, it's really impossible to, to cram for this course to finish it in the last two days. I think the people who are at the O'Day um, talk, we had one of the students from previous years, I think he said he stayed up for two or three days to try and finish this at the end, got nowhere near it. All right, so it's, it's a hand-eye coordination exercise and there's no way to cram for it. So um, my advice is try and block away three to four hours, half hour a day would be best, um, just to keep working on this drawing stuff. And I'm gonna keep saying this over the course of the semester. Um, just to remind you. I'll go through what the projects are in more detail in a sec. The stuff uh, that's in the course outline, this is just a summary, this isn't the full blown thing. There are detailed versions of the project brief on the course learn online that we'll go to shortly. Um, supplementary assessment is, is available for this course, but you won't need that, just pass the course, we won't have to worry about that. Um, if there are situations with disability, disabilities or medical conditions, please uh, contact me and the access and inclusion people at UniSA and we can make reasonable adjustments to the course. Um, academic integrity, <coughs> this is a big one. Um, and it, it, kind of, it happened last year in the second semester version of this course. Um, Somebody submitted their, their work at the end of the semester and Abby, who you'll meet shortly, was grading it and he showed it to me and he said, this doesn't look right. Because there's a real big step between, um, here's Abby. <coughs> um, hey Abby, how are you? I'll introduce you in a moment. Yeah, sure. Um, there's a really, real big step between the work that the student had been doing and then the next 15 pieces of work. Uh, anyway, it turned out the student had been tracing the examples that, that I'd given. All right, so that's, that's an example of academic integrity breach where, you know, you're not doing the work yourself, you're fundamentally, what well, ripping someone else off. All right, so even though this is drawing, it's not an essay where you can copy and paste a bunch of text, there are ways that you can, you can be dodgy, but we're pretty good at spotting that. Um, Abby was, was really great at spotting uh, two examples of that last semester, so don't trace my work. Um, don't trace Abby's work, or try and submit Abby's work either if he does a demo for you. We know, okay? Um, it's actually better if your work looks bad and then progressively gets better and it's your own work, you'll get a better grade for the improvement section of the course. So anyway, academic integrity is really, really serious. Uh, you can actually be booted out of uni if it's, um, if it's a serious breach. So do your own work. Don't pay anyone else to do it for you. Right. Um, extensions, we, um, we know that sometimes you know, people might get sick or there's some exceptional circumstances. Um, what's an example of an exceptional circumstance, do you think? Death. Sorry? Death. 
death, your death or somebody else's death, maybe. <laughs> your, your death is going to be shut. Uh, yes, but a, maybe a death in the family, that would be something that would probably constitute an ex exceptional circumstance. Um, you know, if my dog got run over, I'd be pretty upset by that, but we had a couple of days off, you know. Uh, yeah. House fire. House fire, another good one. Yep. Um, so I think these are pretty good. I think it's pretty clear what an exceptional circumstance is and why you might need, need an extension in those circumstances. But um, something like, sorry, I had to work for the last five days isn't an exceptional circumstance. All right, that's, that's not counted. Um, sorry, I had to train for football three days per week is not an exceptional circumstance. Um, sorry, I've got a hangover. That's definitely not an exceptional circumstance, all right? Um, but the reason I'm mentioning this is if you've got a legitimate reason for an extension, you need to contact me and apply through Learn Online early. Um, and that has to be before the due date. If it happens after the due date, unless it's a super exceptional circumstance, the extension won't be granted. Um, which leads me on to late submissions. In our school, if you submit your work late, it gets a zero. It doesn't get looked at, okay? Uh, unless there are an exceptional circumstance or you have an extension. So that's super important. It's better as a designer, and Abby can tell you about some of his professional experience, I can tell you about that as well. Better to rock up with something on time to your client meeting or to your submission than coming in a day late, two days late. Um, that doesn't look good, all right? So keep that in mind, submit what you have by the due date and you'll generally be okay. Um, if you come groveling later, two days later, we're not gonna, it's hard, but we're not gonna um, be very accommodating for that. Um, okay, course calendar, this course does run for 13 weeks. Um, now, there's a thing called the mid-semester break, which some people seem to think is a holiday. Now, it's not a holiday, it just means you don't, um, generally don't have classes programmed, or in, in first year anyway, you don't have classes programmed, except for this one. Um, in the first week of the break, we'll be offering a little excursion to the Birdwood Motor Museum, okay? And we'll be doing some, some drawing stuff up there. Now I need to confirm that with the museum, so what I'm saying is um, Monday in the first week of the teaching break, which is the 13th of April, um, try to leave that for free, all right? So yeah, if you've, I think I said this about week 14, 15 in the O-Day session, but you know, look at, look at these course calendars when you get them. Look at those deadlines and arrange your holidays around those things. Again, holiday is not an exceptional circumstance, unfortunately. Um, wedding might be, holiday wedding, yeah, maybe that is. But um, yeah, try and plan that stuff around your studies. Right, so that's the uh, course outline. This is the course I learn online. Uh, when you get here, uh, you'll find a bunch of tabs. The project briefs are the interesting ones and the ones we're going to look at today. I'm not giving you printouts of these things, but you might want to take some notes uh, today or ask Abby or me about it um, in the curriculum session afterwards today. Also in the course Learn Online, we have this continuous assessment tab. And I'm going to come back to that today, uh, a bit later in today's presentation, but that's where you're going to submit the work that you do in class today. All right, we'll go through the process for that shortly. So that's a really important one to, to know. Extra information, um, there's some links for books, apps, there'll be lecture slides that get, that get uh, added up there as well. But um, keep an eye on that. Um, I have a bunch of videos, time-lapse videos, other videos of stuff that, that I have done that might be of use to you um, in your studies here weekly drawing exercises, so the little handout that you've got today, uh, they're available digitally as well because you might want to download those and zoom right in or, uh, you know, I guess towards the end of the semester you've, you've lost the handout that I've given you, you need another copy of it. Um, don't ask me to print it again for you. you, you can print that one yourself if you lose it. Um, but anyway, they're going to be there digitally and 
the lectures will be recorded, um, so the lecture recordings will be available to you on a link under that tab there, the study period to 2020 lecture recordings. Any questions so far? Cool. Let's have a look at the project briefs. All right, we'll look at uh, both of them. Now, the first one is continuous assessment. Now, I do suggest you download this and, and read it in a lot of detail um, just to make sure you're across it. It is worth 40% of your grade for this semester. So the aim of this, uh, we'll call it a project, is to develop an understanding and introduce hand drawing skills, including drawing from observation, basic perspective drawing, understanding, uh, understand basic concepts of perspective. So if you complete this project successfully, you'll address, address the following course objectives, apply the principles of perspective construction to create drawings expressing form and structure and understand the range of drawing methods and materials used by designers. So, project brief. You are going to receive one of these handouts every week. I'm going to do a cooking show type thing here, and you'll watch, ask questions, follow along, um, and you'll see one of these exercises happening before your very eyes. You'll then go into the studio or hang in here, and then you'll have a crack at those exercises yourself. So what you can see on today's handout, for those of, anyone not got a handout? Anyone's got one? I think Abby, you might not have one, but we'll get one to you shortly. <laughs> what you'll see on there is there is exercise 3A. Cast your eyes on that for a moment. In red, it says, complete in class, submit via Learn Online by 9 p.m. Friday week one. Okay, so that exercise that's highlighted in red, what you do is you have uh, you make your best attempt at completing that exercise in the one hour, 50 minute practical session that you have in here. Then what you do is you will scan the work that you've completed um, and you will then upload those scans to this continuous assessment link that we looked at just before, that one just there. Um, have you had to do a submission yet? You probably haven't. This is probably your first one. This is exciting. Get used to this. Anyway, this is the next three years. <laughs> Lots of this kind of stuff. Anyway, I can't show you because I'm not a student how it works, but basically you just do the click through. It will ask you to upload a PDF or PDFs. So those PDFs, anyone not know what a PDF is? Great. So you'll scan your work and turn it into a PDF get that PDF and you'll upload it to that link. It all happens in about 30 seconds. Done, that's, that's your submission. Then uh, Abby will be very excited waiting to look at what you've done in that um, session and you'll receive a grade for that work completed. Now, a lot of these exercises, it is unlikely that you'll completely finish the work in the practical session, but what we're looking for is your best attempt. So what we're trying to do, because sometimes what happens, the studio is a pretty cool place to hang out. People you know, might take a half hour break, you know, go get a cup of coffee, bring some food back, have a chat. Before you know it, it's five o'clock, you haven't done any work. So what we're trying to do is you know, get you in the habit of coming to the studio and just doing some stuff. Now the other reason we want you to do stuff in the studio is it's really hard for you to get feedback from Abby and myself if we can't see the work that you're doing. Okay, so um, doing that work, asking those questions, and engaging in the practical session is super important. Um, you know, uh, like I said, you probably won't get to finish them all, but we're looking for what we would call a, a reasonable attempt at the exercise. Okay, so like I said, each week there's going to be something that you that you'll be doing for the first seven weeks that you'll need to submit. Now this week it's set for 9 p.m. And I've set it for 9 p.m. because some people might have to run off to work at five o'clock on the dot, or um, you might have a login issue, you need to call IT help desk and get your account sorted out, or uh, I'm trying to think of some other reason. Anyway, 9 p.m. tonight. 
every other week at 6 p.m. All right, so the class finishes at five. We want you to upload your work by six. Doesn't mean you keep working until six. You can if you want. But the idea is 10 to five each week. Take a photo of what you've got, turn it into a PDF, upload it. That's it, it's done. All right, I'll get this, I'm gonna get probably three or four people going, oh, no, you need to set the extent, you need to set the deadline to Saturday. No, 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 that's not the point. The point is just to do what you can in class and then just submit that. All right, so don't stress too much about it. Um, you know, Abby will probably give you the 4.50 uh, announcement in class, stop what you're doing, take a photo, or head over to the scanners in the Jeffrey Smart building and um, just upload your work to them. Is that pretty clear? It's not? Yep. Great. The work might not be great in week one. It's going to get better in week two. By week three it's going to be even better. Okay, it's going to really develop as things go on. Um, but don't, don't be embarrassed by what it is you're doing, just give it your best shot. Um, you know, like I said, there's no, there's no expectation here. We're gonna take everyone from nothing to uh, being able to draw some pretty cool stuff by the end of the year. And it will happen. Okay, um, so just on the scanning side of things, um, yeah. has everyone got a smartphone? I hate that word smartphone, this is what we're gonna find. Um, phone with a camera, it's connected to the UniSA Wi-Fi network. That's all you need to submit your work. Um, I've recommended a couple of apps that do a really good job of scanning your work. So we don't want you to use the camera app because what happens with the camera app is you just kind of snap it and it'll distort it. It won't make it look natural. But there are some apps um, that what they do is, you know, you kind of put it on the floor on a dark background, it'll trace the outside of the page and then re readjust everything for the um, perspective that goes on in the camera lens. Um, and then it also turns it into a PDF for you as well. Gives you that file ready to be uploaded. Now Dropbox has one built in. Microsoft has one called Office Lens. Uh, there's another one called Genius Scan. There's, there's hundreds of these things, but they're just three that I've worked with that work really, really well. Um, so you might want to download one of those in the, in the break that you have today. If, you, if your phone's got some issues or the camera's busted or, or whatever, um, there are A3 scanners in the Jeffrey Smart building, um, which is the faceted library building over there. Basically, I think you just tap your ID card on the photocopier, stick the paper in, scan in colour, and it sends you a PDF to your UniSA email, which is really cool as well. So it doesn't matter which, which method you use, just got to make sure the scan is, is really legible and representative of the work you've done in class. Be really careful if you do send it through the photocopier. Um, you know, there is a mark here for neatness of the folio at the end, but like if you've torn your page or you've creased the corner, sometimes the photocopier can tear it up. That's pretty heartbreaking because then you've got no work to submit. Is that an exceptional circumstance? I'm not sure. Case by case on that one. Um, we'll see. Okay. Um, is that pretty clear for the first, first project? Yeah, great. Let's get on to the sequel, the portfolio project. Now this isn't due until the 22nd of June. That's ages away, all right? This is week 14. Um, so you've got a lot of time, you've got three months to work on this. And I'm gonna skim over this one, pull out the key features as well for this one. Uh, again, this is just the, the aim is to build up your, your hand drawing skills so you can draw things that make sense and represent what it is you're trying to draw. Get an understanding of uh, basic principles of perspective, one, two, and three point perspective. Get some control over using a pen. Um, learn to write kind of neatly. Um, a bunch of things like this, that's what we're aiming to do. Now this portfolio, follows on or is directly linked to the continuous assessment stuff. So again, if you look at today's handout, you see there are five exercises on there. Now, like I said, the stuff in red is what you do in class, address that first. Then the rest of the stuff you take away and you do that for homework. 
Now we're not going to be checking your homework every week. So, you know, that, that three hours I said that you probably should be doing homework outside, that's up to you. That's probably a bit of self-discipline from your side to make sure you keep up to date with it. But we're going to give you enough work to keep you busy in that homework time each week. Now, you can bring the work in that you've done for homework every week and get feedback on that from Abby and myself. That's, that's what things are all about. But the idea is you just keep building this collection of work over the course of the semester. So, like I said, each week you're going to get one of these sheets and it's going to have exercises on there that you will keep doing in your own time. And the lectures, the cooking show demo that we do, that's going to give you examples of how to do that supplemented with some other video content that I have ready for you. You do need to submit the continuous assessment stuff again. So like today's exercise, no one's going to finish it. But what you're going to do is you're going to take it home and you're going to finish it at home. And then you keep that and that goes into this portfolio that you submit at the end of the semester. So it's really important that each week keep your continuous assessment stuff. So you might want to buy like a, a folder that you can take your work home in, or get custody of one of those lockers if you prefer to work here and leave it here. But you need to keep all of that work. By the end of the semester, I'm trying to remember how many sheets this works out to be. Abby, I think it's about 200 sheets of paper, isn't it? Or maybe more. It's quite thick. It's quite thick. Yeah, we've got some examples that we'll show you later today of, of, uh, of what this portfolio looks like. But you, you're going to have a, a real, uh, yeah, fantastic portfolio which shows your work throughout the semester. In week 14 or before, depending on how quickly you finish everything, you're then going to bind it. So it's going to look something like that. And we're going to open it up and we're going to be able to flick through all this work that you do. Um, and that's what you submit at the end. Um, you need to submit the portfolio, the portfolio that you made, it needs to be in chronological order. So week one comes first in the order that I give it to you on the exercise sheets, that's how you arrange it. So we flip through it like book and everything makes sense. Um, you then bind it. Now uh, you can staple it together. You're gonna need a pretty decent stapler to get through that much paper. Uh, but I would recommend that you take it to, um, there's a place right across the road from the West Oak pub called Campus Colour, and they do some really great binding methods for not much money at all. So you can get a spiral bound or heat bound, and that, that's anywhere from two to five dollars, depending on how thick your portfolio is. That's a really professional way to get this done. Um, office works. Places like that do it as well. Just be aware with office works, they're probably not gonna do it on the spot. The guys across the road will do it on the spot for you. Um, we don't want it submitted in those portfolios, those kind of plastic portfolios with plastic sleeves inside. Don't do that. Do not do that, we hate those. That might be a good way of storing your work before you make your folio, but we might like to put notes on your drawings or mark it up in pencil or something. So if we have to take the stuff out, that's a real pain in the ass. We want to be able to just <coughs> flick through it um, in a time efficient way. But it's also about you making your first book as well and going, you know, at the end of the semester, wow, look how much work I've done. Um, and you being proud of that work that you've, you've put together over the course of the semester. Okay, so that's one of the things as a designer, you're gonna have pride in, in your work and, and those presentation skills are super important. So in this class you'll be presenting a book, other classes you'll be presenting um, a model or maybe a video or a poster like the stuff you see on the wall around. So we get you into the habit of presenting your work in all these different formats. Um, okay, so that's the two projects. It's pretty straightforward. Long story short, coming here every Friday at two o'clock, 10 past two we start a cooking show, three o'clock, you have a break, 10 past three, you come back into the studio with Abby, you start the work, submit what you've done, go home, do three or four hours homework, keep that work, put it all together into a book at the end of the semester. That's, uh, that's all there is to it. Pretty straightforward. Any questions about any of that so far? Um, 
that, that work that we submit on the Friday, is that also included in our portfolio? Yeah, yeah. So, like today's stuff, for example, yeah. you, you probably won't finish that in class. Yeah. You need to take that away and finish it for homework. So just submit what you've got finished by, like I said, 10, 10 to 5, yeah. 450. That's great. Um, and for homework, or you can stay in here afterwards and keep going. You know, you guys have got 24 hour access in here, so you might prefer to work in a group um, and, and uh, have a bit of fun with it. So, yeah. Any other questions? Oh, okay. All right, for the last uh, 10 minutes, I'm gonna just show you some examples of, of what we mean by design drawing, so you have an idea about where we're heading at the, um, for the end of this semester and by the end of this year. Now, uh, Abby and I both have experience in, in automotive. And actually, th at this point, Abby, would you like to say a couple of, just a couple of minutes about yourself, about your experience in design? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so, everyone, this is Abby, and we're very lucky to have him working <coughs> with us this semester. Um, tell us a bit about your career, Abby, I suppose, as a designer. Yeah, as a designer, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and other stuff you do as well. Yeah. Okay. So, hi guys, uh, we're going to work together for this semester, and I hope next semester as well. Yeah. So, so uh, my background is, uh, I started long back in, uh, as a, uh, I started in automotive, so uh, I did a diploma in automotive engineering, then bachelor's in mechanical engineering, and then master's in industrial design. So I was working with a, a subsidiary of Honda that's called Hero Honda in India for 14 years as a designer. And for 11 years I was a designer there. Then after that I had switched over to research, product research, design research, those kind of things. Then um, when I came to Australia three years back, I started teaching, um, I, I left that corporate thing altogether. I will tell you why, <laughs> slowly. <laughs> Then uh, I started teaching as a primary teacher, uh, as a teacher in primary school. So I was teaching drawing there. Then I came to UniSA, and I'm working with Dan and other guys. And uh, I'm also teaching at TAFE. So I'm teaching automotive engineering there. So it's all kind of things which I, I can do, so I'm trying it. So that's what I'm doing nowadays. So, um, and I do illustrations in my free time. So uh, I illustrate for books, for kids' books and stuff. So maybe we can work together on that as well. I might be of some help to you guys as well. Absolutely. And Abby's very modest. I think one of his motorcycles is what the biggest selling motorcycle in India. Yeah. I'm, I'm we we'll talk more about that yeah. later, maybe. But yeah, he's very modest about his, uh, <laughs> his skills. And uh, got a bunch of children's books for sale that you've illustrated. And yeah. Yeah, all the stuff. So anyway, we're very lucky to have Abby here. So um, Thank you. yeah, I'm sure as the semester goes on in class, he'll um, give you lots of examples of his work. Okay. Sure. Thanks, Abby. Cool. All right, so um, let's let's show you some examples of, of the types of drawings that we mean when we're talking about design drawing and, and focus in on, on product and industrial design. This is this is kind of typical, okay? So um, when when I was working in Japan, and I'm sure it's the same for Abby, um, you know, we might be working on a new vehicle design, and we're trying to come up with ways to respond to the project brief. So often doing drawings like this, okay? This is this is done using one of these, and that's it, all right? There's no rulers, there's no circle templates or ellipse guides or anything like that. That's just, let's respond to this brief and uh, um, have a bit of a go there. So that's something, I shouldn't say what that was for, but um, I'll get in trouble if I do. Anyway, um, so that's a pretty typical, what we call working drawing, all right? I, when we're sitting there, we're trying to respond to a brief and with the drawing. You often see this kind of thing on a designer's desk. All right, now we, we don't really know what this is. I'm gonna guess it's something electronic though because you see there's like a power socket just here. Um, might be a home speaker, something like that. But what we can all understand in here by looking at this drawing is that the form is cylindrical. Okay, we can all understand that hopefully. Um, there's like a bit of a relief in the top, it's a bit uh, concave at the top. Um, and this is something that would be typical as the designer is trying to work out, um, again, a response to that brief and looking for a form solution, maybe thinking about how it's being made as well. 
uh, but this is probably not the drawing that they're going to show anyone. This is just them and their idea generation. Same kind of thing going on here. So in this case, um, the designer here is using a black pencil. I forgot to tell you, we, who's got a lead pencil here today? All right, I should make you hand all those in. You're not allowed to sketch in lead pencil. No lead pencil. If Abby or me see one in the studio, we're going to confiscate it, break it. Okay? You're only sketching in black pen. Only. Why are we sketching in black pen only? So you can't erase it. That's that's it. Yeah. And what's that going to do for you if you can't erase it? It's going to stop you relying on being able to remove stuff. Exactly. It's going to build your confidence big time. Okay. Um, now these big pens, they're brilliant. Um, they are so good because depending on how hard you press the pen against the page, that dictates the strength of line that, you, that the pen puts on the page for you. So one of the first things we're going to learn is, and you can see it on the handout that I've given you today, there's an exercise there where you just do a bunch of long straight lines and you build it up from really light to really heavy. Because you've probably never thought about this before, okay? That drawing is an exercise that's really hand-eye coordination, but you end up using all of these joints and muscles in your arm to control the, the stroke that you put onto the page. All right, and um, we'll keep an eye out for it today, but one of the things you wanna start doing with your drawing is stop drawing from your wrist, like you're writing your name on a piece of paper. Because depending on what type of stroke it is, you're gonna end up using your fingers, your wrist, elbow, and your shoulder, maybe your waist as well. You know, it's, it's, all, it's, it's about all of those um, limbs working together. Okay, so um, you're probably thinking, how am I gonna draw a straight line that runs the whole length of an A3 page? It's real easy. Abby will show you how to do it. I might show you as well. Anyway, um, there are ways to do it because we don't wanna have to pull out rulers or erasers or uh, circle templates, compasses, to, to, that slow down the sketching process. Because if you slow down that process, you're slowing down the speed at which your brain can um, come up with all those great ideas that you're trying to communicate. So freehand drawing is what it's all about. That's why we're using black pen anyway. So we're gonna keep an eye out for lead pencil and erasers. You won't need them for the whole semester. Um, we might get onto colored pencil later in the semester, maybe, because you can't erase it. But um, leave those, see all these construction lines that are in here? Okay, so this pair of sunglasses and the designer before they've started uh, drawing the glasses have kind of put these marks in for where the eyes might be, a line for where the nose is probably going to be, and then a bit of a, an ellipse to show where the, where the head is. So they've just ghosted those in really lightly with the pencil and then started to work on the uh, glasses design themselves. So we, we leave those construction lines in there. Um, I call them BS lines. Um, I've heard of them called thinking lines. Abby might have a name for them as well, but you leave those construction lines in because they add to the richness of the drawing, I think. You know, your drawing shouldn't be looking like a computer, does it? Um, human anatomy, so we'll, we'll start doing some human anatomy stuff in here. Again, this is not like visual arts or fine art painting or anything like that in terms of how we un, um, draw or render anatomy, but if you think about what product design does based on the definition that we spoke about last week, we're generally designing stuff for people. Um, so we need to design stuff for people and have an understanding of how it might fit that person, how they might hold it, how they're gonna interact with it. Um, so we need to be able to draw hands, bodies, heads, those kinds of things. We're drawing them somewhat realistically as well. Now, a little secret, I actually wanted to be a um, comic book illustrator before I discovered design a long time ago. Um, so I love comic books, I love manga, anime, all that kind of stuff, but you don't draw people in your design sketches that look like that. 
Okay, and Abby does great illustration work, but he, if he was designing a brand new motorcycle, he's not gonna draw the people in it the way that he draws them in his books at the moment, okay? We wanna think about figure drawing in, in product design. It's like, you know when you go buy a pair of clothes and you look at the mannequin in the shop, and it's kind of plain because we're focusing in on the clothing. Same thing with our product design drawing. Think about it like a prop to show off what your product's doing or how you interact with it. Also, note the handwriting. See how it's really easy to understand? We can read it and it's all perpendicular to the page, to the uh, sides of the page and parallel to the top and bottom of the page. We want to make sure our handwriting looks kind of professional, not like we're year three students. Okay, so we're going to practice our handwriting as well, and that's actually one of today's exercises as well. And I've got a little video on the on the course learn online about your handwriting. Um, we'll talk more about that. Just some more examples. Another sketch by a famous designer, uh, Scott Robertson, who does a lot of stuff for. Um, science fiction films, but also concept cars, concept vehicles. Again, this whole thing, these sketches are done with one of these, these biros. Amazing, you know, we can all have a conversation about the design of this thing, even though it is just drawn with a big biro because the perspective, the form is all being communicated really well. Uh, sometimes you might just take a sketch that uh, you've done at a cafe or at the pub, scan it, take it into the computer, and work it up a little bit more on something like an iPad or, or a Wacom tablet. Okay, that's a bit of a workflow that we'll get into in the second half of the year. But just the ability to sit down and knock out a, a drawing that communicates thing is communicates something is where we're heading with this. Um, this is from a third year student in one of the design courses in the States, and I always love showing this this image because again. The black and white images in the background there are super powerful. That's some of the conceptual work the designer did before taking it um, into something like Photoshop or onto an iPad again and then rendering out the colored versions of it. So rendering is what, what we were referring to when we're talking about the, the yellow and black versions there. So the black and white drawings are fantastic. You're communicating the form, how the thing might be made. Uh, really easy to understand that. Then when we start applying color to it, we're giving indication of materials, textures, finishes, um, those kinds of things. We don't really get into that so much in the first half of the year. We're more interested in let's learn to draw a cube first. Second half of the year, we will start making them look pretty and realistic, like the, the yellow images there. But again, these are very typical drawings that, that the designer will knock out. Um, has anyone used an iPad for drawing or a Wacom tablet for drawing? Yeah, okay, great. Unfortunately, in the first semester, you're not gonna be using one of those at all. We're gonna be using pen and paper. Second semester, once we can draw, we'll change that. I'll let you use a, a tablet if you wish. You don't have to go out and buy a tablet though. Don't go buy one now, mm -hmm. you don't need one. Um, all the demos that I do, I'll be doing on this iPad and I'm not doing it because it's a computer and makes me draw better. Actually, I can draw much better on paper than, than I can on, on the iPad. What it does do is let me record the stuff really easily, get on the projector really easily, um, send it out to, to people really easily. But uh, a tablet, computer, I'm sure Abby will probably agree, doesn't make you a better, um, better at drawing. Um, it's just part of the, the toolbox. Yep. Are there any apps you'd recommend for someone wanting to experiment on a tablet? Yeah, if you've got an iPad, um, Procreate is a good one. Sketchbook Pro is a good one that's across all platforms. Um, and Abby will probably have some suggestions for apps as well. And Abby's got some great suggestions about inexpensive drawing tablets if you want to plug them into your, uh, into your PC as well or Mac. So, but you don't have to go out and buy one. Like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this very expensive piece of paper for the demos. All the tools that I've got in here are simulating the stuff that, that you'll be using um, in an analog way, okay? Like try not to use the undo button, won't use it in front of you ever. Uh, well, maybe once or twice, it's gonna put you up. But, um, and that's the other thing with the tablet for someone who's learning to draw is because it does have the undo button, you know, um, 
when you move over to digital drawing, it, it gives you this impression that all of your drawings need to be perfect. And that's just not, you know, it's just not the great um, kind of place to be in when you're learning to draw. Um, you sit there just hitting the undo button over and over and over again. All right, that's not that's not learning to draw. That's um, that's a different process. So by doing it on paper, making those mistakes, embracing those mistakes, um, you're going to learn a lot more. Yeah, right, this thing's done on a, on a tablet. Um, now, some of the other places that uh, you might go if you are a product designer or industrial designer, um, and where drawing is used quite heavily. Um, it's something like computer game design or uh, movie design, especially for your, you know, your science fiction films, those kinds of things. So uh, these drawings that are on the screen at the moment are from a designer called Aaron Beck, who uh, is based in New Zealand. Um, and this was some concept art for, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the movie. Elysium, I think was the, the movie, the science fiction film, if you've seen that. So this is, this is a pretty typical drawing that designers in, in video games or movies will, will knock out. Um, yep. Art Station's also a really good one. Yeah, okay, cool. Share that stuff on Slack as well. That's, that's a good place to share that. Thanks for the suggestion. I love the right. ones, I do. I do, okay, cool. Um, typical workflow. So this is um, from a designer called Daniel Simon, who you may have heard of probably seen a movie that he's worked on the conceptual design from. This particular one is for one of the vehicles out of um, a movie mm -hmm. called Oblivion. Has anyone seen Oblivion? Yep. Okay, so here, you know, um, he's showing where the inspiration has come from for the, the spaceship. It's a cross between a helicopter and a, and a dragonfly. The design has abstracted that. Um, probably got one of his biro sketches just here that he's then scanned and taken into the computer to refine and, and make it a little bit more tight. Uh, it's come up with the drawing. The next step is, now back when Abby and I first started being designers, it was just probably at that crossover point where, you know, it was great because I used to get paid sometimes to spend a day on a drawing. That was awesome. It doesn't happen anymore. It was probably spending five, 20 minutes on a sketch um, before we move on to the next one. And the reason for that is the 3D modeling technology and what you can do on a computer now has sped up that, that kind of realism that you can get out of, out of the computer um, quite quickly. Now that doesn't mean we drop sketching altogether because um, you're not gonna be able to come up with those ideas if you work straight in the 3D modeling tools. A lot of people who sign up for this program say, yeah, yeah I'm already a designer because I can use a 3D printer and I've got you know, Tinkercad or something. Um, that's not the case at all. Design, a designer has this toolbox of different tools that facilitate different parts of the design process. So we're normally sketching before we end up uh, in the 3D modeling side of things, which is happening here with this project. Designers now working in 3D. And then the next step is to turn it into the real thing that um, seen in, in the movie and that's a pretty typical process for most projects that you'll be doing in this program as well we sketch we make soft models you then take it into 3d and then generally you'll produce it okay so that's that's kind of the process now if this is what you came to uni to do bad news is you're in the wrong program that's um, bachelor of contemporary art and I can give you the program director's name for that now this is fantastic I love art we all love art uh, but unfortunately, well, fortunately, this is not what we do, okay? We don't do this. Again, I love abstract art, love modern art, but we don't do it in here. You're gonna show a colleague who might be an engineer this, they're gonna have a heart attack, right? What is going on here? <laughs> we don't do anything that's abstract, okay? We do things like this. So by the end of this year, if you'll stick with us, please do. You're gonna be able to knock out a drawing and render it to look like this, or this. Now you might not think that right now, but uh, I've been teaching this drawing course for a little while now, and it's true, you'll get there. If you talk to the second and third years, um, hopefully they'll, they'll back that up. 
Now, it does take a bit of practice from you. Anyone play sport in here? Um, yeah. Okay, what do you do when you play sport? Practice. You've probably been practicing if you've been playing football or something. You might have been doing it since you were three or four years old. You kick football. I can't kick football. I didn't play football. Um, I played soccer. But I've never tried to kick one of those balls. That's not true. The few times I have, I'm horrible at it. Um, because I never practiced, right? Drawing's the same. Do a little bit of practice every day and you'll be able to do this in a pretty short amount of time. All right. Any questions about what I've just shown you? The course, ready to do some drawing now? Yeah, cool. All right, so what we're gonna do first up today, is we wanted to do this in the orientation session last week for those of you who are here, but we didn't run, we ran out of time. I'm gonna give all of you one of these. And it's just got, it's got some questions on there. Do you want to know your name? There's just some questions on there. It's not too personal. And then we're interested in you spending 20 minutes drawing a chair. Best attempt at a chair. Okay, with, with the skills you have at the moment. Forget everything I just showed you. Don't try and do that. Just, just draw it the way you think you can draw it now. You want to communicate to Abby and me what a chair is, or what your favourite chair is. Yep. Is that like one drawing, or do you have a If you've got time, you knock out as many as you can, but we, we want one view, just one, all right? And 20 minutes is all you've got for that, okay? So Abby will hand those out to you. But I would suggest you take a five minute break. So reconvene up here at quarter past four. Abby will have the timer on for 20 minutes. At the end of the 20 minutes, we'll make a little pile in the studio where you, you give those back. You're not gonna get um, a lot of time on exercise 3A, the one we've asked you to complete in class today, but then once you finish the chair thing, kind of cluster in groups of probably five to 10 people, and each group is gonna be given an object, a mystery object that's in that red Nike box just there orange Nike box, and you might get two for each group before you submit it. You get 10 minutes to draw as many views of that thing as you can using the black biro, okay? And we'll give you the paper for that as well. That's today. So that's gonna take you right through to five o'clock. Um, about 10 to five, I suggest you start trying to scan your work. Um, maybe in the break, get one of those apps on your phone if you haven't got it already. Um, so we know that works. Anything else they, they should do before then, Abby? I think just stand up for five minutes, have a bit of a stretch, get those arms limbered up, um, and uh, come back in five minutes and, and hit it, okay? Cool.